Hey, what's up there, dude? So first, got a bit of a project for you today, and by that I mean I'm going to be showing you how you can remove and replace a Subaru engine. Now, some of you may know, Subaru engines uh, are notorious for having head gasket issues, but that's not what happened here. What happened here was that uh, this engine was ran low on oil, and as a result, we have a seized engine on our hand. And when that happens, the best uh, course of action is just to get a different engine and swap it out. You know what, actually, this is not completely seized. It's uh, seized enough that the starter motor can't turn it. But uh, now that I'm up here with my uh, pry bar, I can turn the engine with a bit of a difficulty. But, uh, you know, it's seized enough that it's not going to start and it's not going to run. It should be a lot, of st a lot easier than this. I should be able to easily turn the engine with one hand. Alrighty, so first things first, make sure your emergency parking brake's on. Your car is in park if on automatic or in gear if it's a manual. Next, we're going to raise and support the car on jack stands. First things first, we're going to remove our uh, battery cables and then our battery by first unscrewing the 10 millimeter nut that's on these uh, connectors and tucking it away like this. And then loosening the 10 millimeter nut that's holding this uh, battery clamp. Get this out. Next, we'll remove the battery and the tray, the plastic tray that it sits on. All right, next I'm gonna remove this air filter housing by undoing these two 10 millimeter bolts on the sides. There's gonna be two vacuum hoses on the side as well. And this uh, electric connector. Actually, first I'm just gonna go ahead and undo this clamp here. There we go, plenty loose. Next I'll remove this connector. And then this vacuum hose, which you should be able to get these clamps off by hand. And just slide these off. And then the vacuum hose on this side. And next the two bolts on the sides. Now we should be able to get this off the throttle body and then remove it. Like this. Alright, next we'll take off this air tubing which is held in by these two 10 millimeter bolts up here and one 10 millimeter nut down here. There we go. So what I'm going to do next is to remove uh, the radiator with the radiator fans and all the uh, hoses and stuff still attached to it to make more room up here. And in order to do that, we're going to have to drain the coolant first. And I'm going to do that by undoing this uh, lower radiator hose. Just make sure you got your catch pan ready because it's going to be messy. Ready for coolant shower? Ah, not too bad. Next, I'll just open the radiator cap to help uh, drain the coolant out faster. All right, now that we're down here, we're just going to remove the electrical connectors for our radiator fans as well. This is the one on the driver's side. You do this by pulling out on the tab here and then pulling on the connector. And then the same thing on the passenger side. There we go. Next, I'm going to remove this uh, overflow tank by first undoing this uh, coolant hose that goes to our radiator. And then there's going to be two 10 millimeter bolts that are holding it in. There we go. Next, right underneath where our uh, coolant overflow tank was, we got our uh, two transmission lines uh, that go to our radiator. So we're going to remove these next. Now, uh, I'm lucky these are both facing up, the screws on these clamps. But if yours are facing down or the side, you might have to get them from underneath the car. Also, I'm going to mark one of these with this uh, piece of tape that was laying around so I know which one goes where. By the way, these clamps are pretty new. Someone's been here before and some of these uh, the, the, the two radiator hoses actually look new as well, so someone has replaced them recently, probably. There we go. And we thank them for facing these clamps up. <laughs> oh, by the way, you get your uh, catch pan underneath because uh, transmission fluid might come uh, leaking out. Now, if they don't want to come out easy, you might want to get some pliers and twist and pull on them until you get them loose. Next, we'll come to the passenger side and we're going to remove the upper radiator hose again from the engine side, okay? And then wiggle and twist and this will come off. Also, we'll just pop loose this uh, power steering hose that's attached to our radiator here. Alrighty, next all we have to do is just to remove these two brackets that are uh, held down by two 12 millimeter bolts and then we should be able to get our uh, radiator out. All right, here we go. All right, we've got plenty of space here now to both uh, work on these belts, and then when it's time to pull this engine out and remove it. 
All right, next we're gonna remove these two drive belt covers. We're gonna start with this, and this is held in place by this uh, 10 millimeter nut up here, and then this eight millimeter here. And there's that. Now to remove this one, we're gonna remove this eight millimeter uh, screw here, and then we're gonna loosen this uh, 12 millimeter bolt that's also for our uh, alternator as well. There we go. All right, next it's time to remove our drive belts. I'm gonna start with this alternator and power steering pump belt first. We're gonna undo this locking bolt here, and then we're gonna unscrew this bolt, and that's gonna allow us to push this alternator down, creating more slack here, and then we're gonna be able to get this belt out. Pretty much the same mechanism on this side. We'll undo this locking nut here, then unscrew this, then that will allow us to uh, pull up on this tensioning roller and then get this belt out. That's good enough right there. And that's good enough. Here's our alternator belt. And here's our AC compressor belt. Alrighty, next we're gonna remove our power steering pump with the uh, power steering pump hoses that's still attached to it and then push it aside. This pump is attached to our engine by two bolts down here. One you can see here and the other one right across it. Where is it? Right down here. And then one more bolt back here that you guys can't see. You know what, actually before we remove our uh, power steering pump, we're gonna remove these two 10 millimeter bolts that are holding these power steering lines to this bracket that's attached to our engine. Also, there's a grounding cable back here. Make sure you make note of these uh, grounding wires and cables you disconnect because they're very important and uh, you wanna make sure you put them back where you take them off. All right, now to these uh, 12 millimeter bolts. By the way, get yourself a magnet, even if it's broken like mine, it's gonna come in real handy. By the way, this bolt that goes here is the longer one, so make note of that too. By the way, if you're removing your power steering pump like we're doing here, we do need to remove this uh, 10 millimeter bolt. Actually, we don't need to remove it completely from this bracket, just remove it from our alternator because it screws in to the end of the alternator on the other side of this. There is a connector back here that we forgot to remove. Oh, come on. There we go. Now we should be able to tuck this aside. Make sure you remove this uh, power steering fluid reservoir too. There's a little clip back here that you pull that you push out and then you pull up on this. And if you got bungee cords, just go ahead and bungee cord your power steering pump to the side of your fender. All right, next up, our alternator. First, remove this connector. Next, we're gonna remove these, uh, this 12 millimeter nut that's holding in our uh, alternator uh, cable. There's also a washer here, don't lose that. Next, we remove this connector, that's for our AC compressor. And then tuck this uh, alternator cable out of the way. And next we'll get this bolt out of the way and then we should be able to get this alternator out. There's also a little bracket that goes in the back of uh, the alternator. Make sure you don't lose that. Alrighty, next with some gentle persuasions, we should be able to get our alternator out of the way. All right, next we're gonna get our throttle cables out of the way and we do that by removing these two 10 millimeter bolts and detaching this uh, throttle cable bracket from our intake manifold. All right, next it's time to remove these uh, throttle cable and we do that by doing them one at a time. You can just, and you just press down on these and then you fish the cable around. And then you need to line up this pin that's at the end of this cable with a little opening here and then that's how you can just slide this out, hopefully. Yours is not stuck. Neither is mine. Great. There's the first one. And same thing for the, the other one, which is gonna be hard to show you, but same procedure. Next, we're gonna remove these fuel lines. Now, if your car is still running while you're replacing this engine or pulling this engine, you can always just pull the fuel pump relay and then run the car until it dies. That way, you won't have much fuel in these lines and you won't have a huge leak. But as uh, this engine is seized, <laughs> we cannot do that. So just get a lot, bunch of rags and put it underneath there so you catch most of the fuel that's gonna leak out. And next, just twist and pull on these and they should Come out. All right, with our fuel lines disconnected, now we're gonna remove our uh, AC compressor with the, its uh, bracket and assembly and without disconnecting any of our AC lines. As far as I can tell, this AC bracket is held in place by five bolts. Uh, two that we got on this side and three on this side. We got one back there, this one here, and this one on the side. And these are 14 millimeter bolts. 
All right, these two on this side are the same size. Actually, I stand corrected. Since we're removing the compressor with the bracket, we don't need to touch these two bolts here. We need to just uh, remove this one and then that one on the back. All right, now we should be able to get this out of the way. All right, so I'm gonna split this repair into two videos and this is gonna be the end of the first uh, episode. So I'll put a link to the second episode right here on the side of the screen so you can click on it if you're interested. I'll also put some other links on the screen that you might find interesting. So if this video has so far piqued your interest, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you wanna see more like it. I'll see you at the next episode. Thanks for watching.